Hello, my name is Chris Hammond. I'm the director of training here with .NET New Corporation. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about creating an edit button within our task manager module. This is part of our task manager series. So the steps we're going to go through is we're going to open up our view control, which has a repeater within that. And within each of those repeater items, we're going to add in an admin panel that we're going to place an edit button. Now in a future video, we're gonna add a delete button in there as well. Now we're wrapping both of these within the admin panel so that we can turn them on or off based on permissions. So we're gonna add the button into the view control and then from within the code behind, we need to bind the information necessary for that button. So we're gonna to have to actually do an on item data bound event and we're gonna to need to do an on item command event so that when someone clicks on that button, it actually takes them to the edit control. So we'll go ahead and switch over to, to our Visual Studio project. We already have that open here. And within the view control of our task manager module, I'm gonna come within the item template and just before the closing list item there in the HTML, I'm going to add in a panel for our admin controls. So we're just gonna do a simple ASP panel, ID, PD, PNL, admin, give it a run add equal server. We'll set its visibility to false, that way we don't have to worry about it turning on when you shouldn't have access to it. We're gonna to have to enable it in the code behind. Now within that panel, we're simply gonna add a link button. So we're gonna do ASP link button, give it an ID of LNK edit, and run at equals server. Now for that particular link button, we need to go ahead and define a resource key or the localized string for our edit task link button. So we're gonna call it edit task dot text. Now we'll need to add that to our resource file as well. We'll do that in just a moment. Now in order for the link button here to actually function, we need to go ahead and define a command name. Now we're gonna have two link buttons ultimately within this panel, one for edit and one for delete. For the edit one, we'll go ahead and give it a command name of edit. Now we're gonna set the visibility on the link button here to be false as well. And we'll go ahead and disable it as well by setting it to false. And that will simply add our link button into our repeater control. Now in order to actually make this work within the repeater control, we're gonna have to add a couple of events in. So we're gonna add an event for on item data bound, and we're gonna call the event RPT task list on item data bound. We'll do the same thing for on item command rpt task list on item command. Now in our code behind, we'll create those two events. Now before we go through that process, let's go ahead and add our localized string into the resource file. The resource file is view.ascx.resx. We'll open that up, paste in the string, edit task.txt, and then we'll define the value for that to just be edit. Go ahead and save that file, and we can close the resource file. Now in the code behind for the view control, we're gonna go ahead and create those two events. So we're gonna go ahead and add the two events into the event handlers region. So I'll go ahead and go after page load here. Now I'm not gonna go ahead and type in each of these events. I've already created the code for this, so I'm just gonna paste those in and I'll walk you through what these events are doing. So the first thing we're gonna do is in the repeat task on item data bound event, we need to add a reference to system.web.ui.webcontrols. So we'll go ahead and click on the link there to add that reference using ReSharper. You can see that brings in our repeater item event args type. So within that, we're gonna go in and we're gonna check to see if the item that's being bound is of the type alternating item or item, as opposed to a header or a footer. Then we're gonna come in and we're going to look for the edit control, the link, the link button that we created. So we need to get an, uh, a reference to that. We also need to get a reference to the panel for the admin uh, panel. Now we're gonna take our current task and get that from the item that's being bound in the repeater item event args. And then we wanna make sure that we have edit rights. That means that the user that's logged into DNN currently has the ability to edit the module and we also want to make sure that we found the edit control and the control or the panel for the admin controls. We want to make sure that those two objects are not null. And then we come in and we set the visibility on the admin controls panel to true. We're going to set 
the command argument on the edit link to be the ID of the current task. So this is what we need in order to actually build out the hyperlink to the edit control for a particular task. So that's what we're doing. We're setting the command argument, which we'll use later. And then we go ahead and enable and turn on the visibility for the edit link. Now, if we come in and we don't have edit rights or either, either of those two items are not found, then we're going to go ahead and make sure we have the visibility on the control, the admin control set to false. So that's the on item data bound event. So when we bind a list of tasks, we're going to go through and each time a, a task gets added to the list, it'll run through and set the proper command argument. Now after that, we have the on item command event. So this is actually what's going to fire when someone clicks on the edit link. So it'll come in here and we're going to be able to check for the command name that we've defined within the link button. And in our case, we're looking to see if they've clicked on a button for the command name called edit. From there, we're going to build out a URL to the edit control. We're going to use the edit URL method, which is found from our portal module base class, which ultimately our control inherits from. Now, within the edit control, we can pass in a couple of things. First thing we can pass in is a, an empty string here. We're actually passing in two empty strings to this method. And then we're passing in the control key of edit. Then we're going to pass in a query string parameter for TID. And in our case, that's our task ID. What we want to do is we want to build out a, a URL to the edit control, passing in the ID of the task in which the person or the user clicked on the edit link. So that's why we are using this command argument property. So that query string is going to be added into the URL that gets built. So when someone clicks on that link, they will then be sent to that edit URL, passing in the task ID. If, they, if we come in and we don't have a command name being passed, then it's just going to redirect back to the current URL of the current .new page. So from here, we can go ahead and do a build, make sure that we get a build succeeded, and let's switch over to our browser and take a look at our task manager. So right now we have a list of three tasks. If I go ahead and refresh the page, and I'll pause the video while we wait for the recompile to happen, and once that page fully loads, we can see we now have edit links underneath each of the three tasks. And if we go ahead and click on one of those edit links, it's going to take us to the edit control for our task manager module. But the, the difference here is it's currently empty. If you take a look at the URL, it's passing in tab ID 65, CTL edit, MID 396, and then TID 1. So that's passing in task ID number one. Well, in a future video, we're going to wire up the edit control to load an existing task so that you can go through the process of actually editing an existing task. In this video, we've just gone through and added the ability to link to an existing task. In future videos, we'll also go through and add a delete button into the panel, the admin panel there on our view control. In the meantime, I'd encourage you to check out our .NET Nuke training page found under the Resources tab on .NET Nuke.com. There you'll find a variety of free videos as well as information about our live and recorded webinars and our .NET Nuke training subscription. Again, this is Chris Hammond with .NET Nuke Corporation. Thanks for watching the video.